Hi, my name is Aftar. I'm a traveler from Ludhiana, Punjab. Being a foodie and an explorer, I have always been fascinated by diverse cultures, languages, and traditions. I aim to share my travel experiences with you and take you on a journey through my vlog. Please come and join me on my adventures. My first stop is Happy Pancakes. The cafe is located on the seventh floor of this unassuming building in Ginza. You will have to go up to the seventh floor to get your ticket and then wait until your number is called. I would recommend going there early as this place gets super busy. I am visiting during the cherry blossom season, so I have decided to go with the Sakura special. The pancakes are so fluffy and they just melt in your mouth. The pancakes are not overly sweet and they taste delicious. Ginza is one of the top shopping districts in Tokyo. Most of the high-end fashion brands have their flagship store in Ginza. You can buy fine jewelry in the Wako departmental store or watch traditional Japanese dance at the landmark Kabuki Za Theatre. My next stop in Ginza is Itoa Stationery Store. This is one of my favorite places to visit in Ginza. The store was founded over a hundred years ago. This is the best place to find a unique souvenir for friends and family or to buy things to decorate your home and office. The store has 12 floors of stationery and yes, it also has a farm on the 11th floor. So I think they have everything for everyone. Itoa has two stores. The giant red paper clip marks the main building and the black fountain pen marks the smaller store across the road. I also visited the biggest Uniqlo store in Tokyo. Oh yes, the shopping also gets its own raincoat. While you are in the neighborhood, also check out the Mitsukoshi and Gunza 6 departmental stores. You would want to melt your credit card, I shop there. But even if you're not buying anything, they are a must-see places in Ginza. And if you are a food lover like me, head straight to their food court and you will be offered high quality produce with a very reasonable price tag. In Mitsukoshi, you can buy your food and head to their rooftop terrace on the 9th floor where you can eat your purchased meal and also enjoy the free views of Ginza. After getting some rest, I'm out again on hunt for some dinner. I decided to visit Ginza Kagari. This place serves slow cooked chicken broth ramen. The ramen broth is super rich and in all honesty, this was one of the best ramen bowls I had in my entire life. So it is definitely worth checking out. On my way back, I stopped at Taiyaki Kanda Daruma, which serves freshly made taiyaki. The crust was crunchy and the center is filled with gooey red bean paste. I'm starting my day today at Ningyocho, which began as a tradesman's town. Even though it is located near the busy Ginza neighborhood, the neighborhood has a very suburban vibe. While I was walking around, I saw the fire brigade providing first aid lessons in the street. When you arrive in this neighborhood, the first thing you notice are the two huge antique looking marionette clocks. Uh, they are about eight meters high that performs a puppet show on the hour, every hour between noon and 7 p.m. I was starving by this time, so I stopped at Shigamori, a shop with a hundred years history. I stopped here to buy Ningyo Ayaki, uh, that is a pastry filled with red bean paste. They packaged the pastry so nicely that I didn't open the wrapping until later in the evening. The pastries were delicious with a generous filling of red bean paste. The neighborhood is full of cafes and bakeries. I decided to visit Nell, which is a craft chocolate shop. The chief chocolatier here has studied under an international award-winning chocolatier in Kyoto. Nell has uh, different coffee sets and they also have a range of different chocolates. Uh, their high quality is easily recognized by its taste. I decided to order black coffee with chocolate mousse. The chocolate mousse was delicious. It's time for a walk to burn these calories. I walked from Nell to Banke statue. 
Uh, Benke is a character from a 19th century kabuki play, The Warrior Monk. The statue is very popular with kids and it is a symbol of strength and loyalty. Now I am heading back to the station via Amazake Yokocho Street. The name means Sweet Sake Alley and is named after a renowned store that sold sweet sake. You can find some quirky souvenir around the street. My next stop is Akihabara, which is often called Akiba. Akihabara is known for anime, manga, video games, and the electronic. Before we explore the neighborhood, I wanted to try the soba at Kandayabu. They are one of the oldest soba restaurants in Tokyo, and the restaurant is perpetually busy. The restaurant has this old Tokyo charm to it. Once I got here, I waited for an hour for my number. I had soba zuki. It is a soba seaweed roll with egg and mushroom. For the mains, I ordered siru soba. Now that I have lunch, it's time to head back to the anime world of Akihabara. Every Sunday, the streets are closed to the moving traffic between 1 to 6 p.m. This allows the pedestrian to roam free. In Japanese, they call it Hakosha Tengoku, which literally translates to pedestrian heaven. My first stop in Akiba is my favorite store, Super Potato. And if you love your video games, Super Potato is not a place to miss. They sell all types of video games and consoles, and they specialize in retro systems. It is more like a museum than a shop, so even if you're not buying anything, you should still come and check it out like me. Every time I visit, I go to their top floor to play Street Fighters and Mario. That was nostalgic. Mandarake is another specialized store in Aki. They sell pre-owned goods and one of the best places to find rare manga related goods. My next stop is Don Quixote. It is a discount store chain that carries everything from groceries and toys to electronics and high-end fashion goods. This branch in Akihabara has a girl pop-up group performance on the 8th floor, but unfortunately it was closed when I visited. This store also has a maid's cafe and an arcade. The main electronics store in Aki is Big Camera, Softmap, Laux and Yodobashi. Yodobashi is my favorite store and probably the biggest electronics store in Aki. All these stores sell international models. Aki makes little kids out of all of us. We were having so much fun that we totally lost track of time. It is late at night and time to head back for some rest. Today we are visiting Asakusa and Tokyo's oldest temple, Sensoji, which is a Buddhist temple. The first thing you notice is the Kaminarimo gate with the giant red lantern. The temple is a famous tourist destination. The temple is surrounded by several shrines and shops selling souvenirs and street food. You can also rent kimonos here if you would like to dress up in a traditional Japanese outfit. We visited Asakusa to try the street food and here are some of our favorite places. First of all, you must try the chocolate banana. There are multiple stands around the Sensoji temple and the banana is not to be missed. The second stop is Naruto Taiyaki. The taiyaki is made in front of you and it is served while it's hot. We're having taiyaki. It's really hot. Wow. Oh, it's crunchy. It's really soft inside. Not too sweet. <laughs> Stop it. The third stop is Punaba for mochi. I'm having some mochi, but it's a mysterious one because I don't know what's inside. Mm, what is that? Seaweed? Minty. Definitely some bean. It's giving me a taste of the ocean a little bit. So seaweed. It's, it's made of grass. <laughs> the fourth thing we wanted to try was the candied strawberry. Oh my god, we just got the strawberries. 
I wasn't expecting that. The sugar is crystallized and the strawberry is so soft. Oh, it's so delicious. You must try when in Japan. Mm. We were so full by this time, but we didn't want to miss the melon bread. So yes, we had that as well. We just got melon bread. We're never gonna stop eating. Oh, look, there's sugar on the outside, but the bread is not sweet at all. Uh, it's very moist and tastes delicious. <laughs> After so much walking, our feet were tired and we decided to visit Asahi building rooftop for a glass of beer. The Asahi Sky Room is located on the 22nd floor. The beer is served at negative 2 degrees. We are on the 22nd floor of Asahi building with really nice high school beer and unbeatable view. We are at Amayoko, which is next to Ueno Park. We're going to get something to eat and then we're going to check out the park and the cherry blossom. For lunch, we stopped by this little cute fish cafe to have some fresh fish at a very reasonable price. Amayoko is a busy market street that sits under the railway line. Amayoko has shops that sell seafood, clothing, dried food, sweets and a range of other items. After a quick lunch, we headed to Ueno Park, home to several museums including Tokyo National Museum, the National Museum of Nature and Science and Museum of Western Art. But today, we are not here for the museums, we are here for the cherry blossoms. This park is arguably the most popular spot to see the cherry blossom. Everyone visiting the park was enjoying a picnic, sitting under the cherry blossoms. We had a relaxing afternoon exploring the park and its market before heading out to Shibuya for a quick ramen dinner. I'm visiting Shinjuku today and my first stop is Verb Coffee. The coffee was perfectly brewed and I recommend you check it out if you are nearby. I'm visiting Shinjuku to catch up with friends as I arrived early. I decided to walk around Kabukicho, the most prominent nightlife neighborhood in Tokyo. While walking around the streets, I ended up at 7-Eleven to buy a $3 fruit smoothie. If you like your smoothies, then definitely check out the 7-Eleven stores. Today is the first day of spring in Japan and a public holiday. The locals are heading to Shinjuku Goyan Park. It is one of the popular parks in Tokyo and blends three styles formal garden, landscape garden, and Japanese traditional garden. The cherry blossoms were in full bloom and the park was just magical. We decided to follow the locals and have a nice day relaxing with a picnic. And after a day of relaxing, our visit to the park was over just like that. Just like that? Just like that? <laughs> just like just that? Just like that? Just like that? Just like that. <laughs> our next stop was a local place to try Japanese pizza. And it was my first time eating a pizza with chopsticks. From there, we went to our next destination via a shrine in Shinjuku. We decided to try Sushiro for dinner. Uh, Sushiro is a conveyor belt sushi place. The sushi here is cheap and delicious. You order your sushi on a tablet and it arrives at your table on a conveyor belt. They also have hot water taps on the tables to make green tea provided on the table. It is definitely worth checking out. Oh, and side note, avoid the uni here. It looks like a turd. Oh my god, they're making me eat turd. <laughs> have, the whole, have the whole thing. It's like that. It was getting late, so we walked to the station in Shinjuku via Kabukicho and Amoido Yokocho. You are surrounded by neon lights in Kabukicho, and walking around the street at night is a worthwhile activity in itself. When you are in Shinjuku, you cannot miss Godzilla's head. It is a landmark attraction in Kabukicho and the Godzilla sculpture is accessible from Hotel Gracery. Oh, and he gets angry when you touch him. Let's play with the Godzilla. Omoido Yokocho, which is also known as Memory Lane and Peace Alley, 
uh, is a great place to visit for drinks and authentic Japanese dishes from hole in the wall establishments. It is our fifth day in Tokyo and we are going to Odaiba, which is a man made island. We are visiting Theme Lab, which is an international art collective, and the art here is interactive. We spent half of our day exploring the museum and taking Instagram worthy portrait shots. The visit to Tokyo is only complete after you visit Theme Lab. Here is some more footage from our visit there. I'm gonna need help to get up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at my breakfast. I'm not ready for this. Can I just roll? Choke it up. There is no other way to say it, but we are at the Paul's room. Guys, we just visited Team Labs in Japan. Um, it was really unique and a very immersive experience. So if you're coming to Tokyo, I reckon it's a must visit. Our next stop is the Tsukiji Market. Even though the fish trading has moved to a newer location, this market still has some of the best seafood Tokyo offers. First stop was a chicken restaurant in Tsukiji and the only word that can describe our experience is amazing. The second place we tried was a sweet potato dessert place. The sweet potato was served with ice cream and it was divine. It is so unique, it's so delicious. I would highly recommend checking this place out. Next, we tried a fish restaurant. They decided to have unagi and in his words, The best. The best. After that, we tried tomago, uh, that is scrambled eggs on a stick. Sweeter than I thought it would be, but good. The market was bustling and we had a blast walking around and trying different food. On our way back, we decided to have a final dish, the pork knuckle. Not saying anything, but yeah, it's that good. After some rest at the hotel, we went to Shibuya to catch up with a friend. While in the neighborhood, we checked out the Nintendo Store, Tower Records, and Hachiko Memorial statue. Shibuya is Tokyo's most iconic neighborhood, known for its shopping and entertainment, and is home to the iconic Shibuya Crossing. After a quick dinner, we spent all night at a karaoke bar, the world is not ready to see me sing, but here is a clip of Dave smashing the tunes. Today, I am in Nakameguro, which is one of the best districts to see the cherry blossom. My first stop was going to be Starbucks Reserve, however the queue to get in was around 3 hours and nobody got time for that. So I decided to have a proper cup of coffee at a local cafe. The coffee was perfectly brewed and popular with the locals. The cafe also served craft beer in case you need a hit in the morning. This neighborhood is worth checking out as you will find a lot of local boutiques and delicious local cuisine. Here is a short clip of the cherry blossom and some local shop in this neighborhood. Our first stop was Daiwa. This seasonal takeaway sandwich shop menu attracts weekend queues for the unique lineup of sandwiches including kiwi, pear, grape and mango. The next stop was Happy Pudding. I went with the original pudding made with bright orange egg yolks and features a rich luxurious flavor. My next stop is Shimokitizawa. I walked to the station to catch a train there. Shimokitizawa is popular with young people while having a nostalgic feel. 
you will find independent businesses here and it is known for its vintage fashion, vinyl records and cool charming cafes. It was also listed as one of the top 10 coolest neighborhoods in 2022. My first stop here was Ballon de Sai. The cafe is known for its latte art. The barista here was super friendly and the coffee was delicious. I decided to have a normal cafe latte before exploring the suburb. The second stop was New York Joe Exchange. This store used to be a public bathhouse. It's a cool place to visit and they sell non-branded used vintage clothing. After that, I walked around the neighborhood before arriving at Flamingo. This place sells vintage clothes from the 40s to the 90s. I went to my final vintage market before heading to the bonus track. A group of stores gathered around a courtyard. I wanted to visit Hako Departmental Store, uh, known for its fermented and specialty grocery. It is a great place to buy souvenirs. My next stop is Shirahige Cream Puff Factory. I had an adorable strawberry flavored Totoro Cream Puff before heading to my final stop, Ten to Sen. They sell spicy ramen based on Japanese style soup curry, which was accompanied by lassi. You can choose six levels of heat. Good morning. I was visiting Mikasa Deko Cafe in Harajuku to meet a friend and in my humble opinion, the best fluffy pancakes in Tokyo. They serve thick gravity-defined fluffy pancakes that are made with ricotta cheese. The pancakes were served with sweetened whipped cream and maple syrup. They also make some super decadent pancake, so you must check this place out. It was raining very heavily, so I took shelter at Tokyo Plaza. Tokyo Plaza is famous for its eye-catching entrance portal. They also have a rooftop garden, a great place to hang out with friends and enjoy free city views. As we finished our Starbucks coffee, I walked around Harajuku. Omotesando is a boulevard that runs between Harajuku and Ayoma. It is best known for its art galleries and expensive shopping. You can find all the luxury brands here. Harajuku is a great place to shop and try excellent food. It should be top of the list for all travelers who are visiting Tokyo. After walking around Omotesando and Harajuku Street, I ended up in Takashita Street. This street became famous in the 90s for selling counterfeit clothing. Now you can find many small independent stores selling clothes and the colorful clothes impact the food stores here. You will find a lot of bright candy places. I would recommend trying one of many crepe stands in the street. From there, I walked to Meiji Shrine. The shrine was dedicated to Emperor Meiji and Empress Shokan in 1920. The shrine was rebuilt after it was destroyed during the Second World War. The shrine is surrounded by lush forest and thrives in the middle of the concrete jungle. It is truly an oasis of peaceful tranquility amid the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. After walking around Harajuku and the Meiji Shrine, I was starving, so I decided to try the Harajuku Gyoza. After waiting for about 15 minutes in the queue, I was seated inside. The Gyoza were among the best I ever had and are not to be missed if you visit Tokyo. In the evening, I was catching up with my friends for a light meal and it turned out to be a Turu Tontan Udon. The Udon bowls were bigger than our faces and the food was too delicious to resist. At this restaurant, you can request three times the amount of noodles without any extra charge. Oh, no, I... <laughs> After dinner, we did some bar hopping in Golden Guy before heading back to the hotel to prepare for my final day in Tokyo tomorrow. We are in one of my favorite spots in Tokyo, the Yanaka. Uh, even though it was raining heavily, I wanted to visit Yanaka. The buildings here span decades, if not century. My only stop here in Yanaka is Nito to try their flan. I ordered coffee with their delicious flan, which complemented the coffee nicely. After the coffee, I took the train to Tsukushima Monja Street to have Monjayaki. 
our next destination is Tsukushima, Monja Street. The street smells delicious. I am just so hungry smelling all these aromas. <laughs> Monjayaki is a thin batter made with flour, dashi and various combination of toppings. It looks liquidy, hot and may be an unattractive dish but once you have the first spoonful, you will not be able to stop. After lunch, we took the ferry to Asakusa. The ferry over Sumida River offered amazing views of the city of Tokyo. The ferry ride was very relaxing and we arrived in Asakusa in no time. We walked around Sensoji at night and the place just looked magical. If you have extra time, visit Asakusa at night. An ethereal experience was a perfect way to end my trip to Tokyo. Oh, every time we come to Sensoji, we like eat too much. I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna try it out. Some sort of brie cake. I think it's sweet potato, it's the yellow sweet potato. So good. Oh my, must try. The shop. Seriously, so good. Mm. Matane. Matane.